say who you are, your nation, and kind of your role. You know, <laughs> there's a lot, I guess. Okay. Oh, I got. Uh, well, my name is a uh, Christian name. The Christians gave me the name David Swallow. That's that's a Christian name I was given when I was a small, you know, when I was a child. Now, when I said grow big, huh? They gave me their name again. Uh, what well, with uh, you have money? <laughs> when I became an adult, they gave me that. What well, with uh, you have money? Which translates into walks with pride. And I'm a Lakota, Tito, Tito Lakota. That's what I am. From the one I wake uh, band. One well, Aweka band is affiliated with, closely affiliated with Crazy Horse. Okay. And uh, we're his backup. Always backup. So that's where I'm from, and I'm living here. I was born and raised here on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation here. And when were you born? Back in 51. And uh, one, one thing you had mentioned in one of our previous interviews is how long it took you to hear English for the first time. Well, our very first language is the Lakota language. When the first time I hear English language, uh, it was in the day school, you know. And back in those days, nobody spoke English, the white, white man language, you know. Everybody spoke our first language. See, everybody. And uh, when I entered that school hall, I entered the white man's school, it was a strange world. They talk a strange language. And they eat strange. Everything is a strange thing. Strange. You know? So, in the 50s, when I entered that day school, they call it here. Now, they call it number 16. Number 16 day school. So I went to school there. And we don't, I don't even have any slightest idea what the teacher is trying to, the old white woman is trying to do or say it. There's totally no kind of understanding between us. What is he trying to do? You know? And that's not only me. Oh, my cousins, you know, we don't know what she's trying to say. So we have fun all day, try to understand. You know, sign language, or we get some of that, or we try to, you know, we spoke in Lakota language and try to get to her, you know. As time goes by, I think my female cousins are the first one to speak the English language, white man language. And they have, they're the first ones, the girls are the first ones to understand it. And some of us take us a long time to understand. Some of us boys, you know. Well, how long did it take you? Probably Jamie, about 13 years. Oh. So, you know, the, now, you know, she taught us, how she taught us to speak is because uh, she plays the piano and sings. Oh, hey, See? That, okay. Uh -huh. that and that's awesome. how we picked it up. Then, as, as we go, no means no, no, yes, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, she was a nice uh, uh, white lady, you know. You have a lot of patience, <laughs> you know. Well, there wasn't like any kind of like boarding school abuses. Like no, that. day school is different. Right. Yeah, boarding school is different. And I uh, finished two years in the uh, day school here in Porcupine and one year in a boarding school. And what was 
noticeably different about the boarding Oh yeah, school. Uh, boarding school is a military school, you know. And uh, uh, that's where we're not supposed to speak our language. What would happen when you did? Uh, they hit you on your hands with the ruler. They gave us, uh, we're all in a huge buck, uh, darm. Huge darn, and we're all sleeping in a, a, a bed bunk, you know, bunks. And uh, our sheet has a number, our bunk has a number, everything we have has a number. You have to remember that number. <laughs> See? And they taught us how to uh, fold our beds, you know, and they gave us a foot locker. So mostly it's ROTC now. Right. Uh -huh. Washington Company, Lincoln Company, it goes like that. Smallest ones are out there in the front. They taught us how we walk as we, we drill. It's a drill walk. <laughs> then we all sing at the same time. Yeah. Life has brought you all over. I mean, to go from Pine Ridge to China to, I mean, everywhere else in between. Uh huh. Um, you know, how did you go from there to where you are now? You know, what was that growth like? Oh, uh, from boarding school to where I am, it's a long story. You gotta have about 10 years to stay right here and talk to me, you know? Well, that's what I'm trying yeah, to do. Okay. Before you die. <laughs> Before I die, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, after that, uh, how we took off, I didn't finish boarding school. I learned quick. I'm a quick learner. <laughs> so I learned pretty quick, but uh, uh, one of the young relatives, you know, uh, I think they washed his mouth with soap and he's a young kid, you know, gagging and crying and that bloody nose they hit, you know, the matrons did that, you know. So we went over there, there's about six of us, went over there to comfort her. And uh, we told him not to cry. We're gonna go home tomorrow. And he was happy. He wanted he doesn't want to be there. So next morning, during the noon recess, we went to the uh, after we ate, we went to the mass hall and we took uh, whatever we can. Then the recess was going on, we took the young boy, there's uh, six of us, went into the river. And we'll go along the river all the way until about two, three miles out of Pine Ridge. That was, once we got into the hills, we're home. We are home, you know. We took the little one, we was bringing him back. So, well, from the Pine Ridge to Porcupine here, uh, I think we walked like for two days. And do you still know that kid, or? Apparently, he died of uh, alcohol. Mm -hmm. See, Sorosa. But he's from the next creek over there in Madison. <laughs> But we brought him back over here, you know. And on the way coming back, it's a red-tailed hawk, let us know if somebody looking for us. Red-tailed hawk will be flying above us screaming. Then we climb up to the big pine tree sitting up there, and here they come. BIA, police, whoever, looking for us on the bottom all the way. Then the coyote woke us up in the morning. And we followed a coyote too. Brought us back all the way to Grandpa's house. Grandpa Fool's Crow, right? No, that's, um, uh, my grandpa is way older than Fool's Crow. Oh, way older than Fool's yeah. Crow. Uh, my grandpa's called Fool's Crow nephew. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So uh, how, uh, how old was he when he died? Who? Your grandpa. He was 97. Okay, wow. Okay. Died in 1962. Wow. Uh -huh. So, when they came back, uh, they sent a word to this uh, little guy, grandparents. And they all came. We live like about a half a mile down this way, the old places over there. Okay. And everybody came. You know. And we told them what they said in the scene. He's got a cut on the lip and, you know, dark uh, black eye, the little kid, you know. And we brought him back. 
And from there on, I never went to school because when the superintendent and the police came, that uh, uh, kids, little kids' grandpa was talking to him. It said he never touched his own grandson like that. And what the boys told us like that, he uh, that he took his uh, uh, cane and knocked that uh, superintendent out. <laughs> and then he was walking towards the police and the police was, you know, we're gonna take care. And after that, we never go to school. Well, well, then what did you start to do? Like, oh, I, I started living, you know, right. just uh, yeah, just everyday life, you know. And my grandpa, what to do, help around, you know. They got big fields, so we do all that. And, and uh, then my grand, uh, other other relative says, you don't go to school. You don't know how to speak English. You're not going to be mounting nothing. <laughs> Guess what? I outlive all of them. Right. Uh -huh. And you know what? I still remember all the ceremonies. Mm -hmm. See? There's more ceremonies than the sweat lodge on Sundance. Well, like one is the ball ceremony. Yeah, That's throwing up the ball. Uh -huh. Say more than that, you know. So, so anyway, I lived through there until, uh, see, my mother and my father lived in a town, a city of Gordon, Nebraska. Mm. And my uh, father works, uh, my father is a, a senior, uh, he's a veteran. He's one of the first uh, Navy SEALs, Native Americans. Oh, wow. Yeah. First SEALs, you know. Then he's, he survived Pearl Harbor, you know. Wow. And um, my father and mother met at the Air Force Base, and that's where they got married, and that's where, you know, every, uh, but I don't know why I live with my grandparents. Right. But I do know that the only thing I know is I live with them, you know, mm -hmm. see? So when the, uh, my grandpa, when first the grandmas died, they died because of the water is being polluted with tuberculosis. So when we drink the water huh, we have on this reservation, we have a tuberculosis epidemic. That's why they opened Rapid City, Sioux uh, Sand, they call it Sioux Sand Sanitarium. Uh, that was a, a old army hospital, but they turned it into a sanitarium. And somewhere down there, there's a graveyard. There's a lot of the grandma and grandpa, a lot of relatives been buried up in Rapid City, you know. Whereabouts is that? If I can remember, it's somewhere southwest of the sanitarium. Okay. See? Somewhere down there. Mm. I was a young kid. Mm. And most of the grandparents died of that. And I believe my, my grandpa died of loneliness, you know? Because that time they have seasonal jobs, so, uh, you know, we went to uh, Greeley, Colorado, mm. and he was talking about taking the journey. Oh. It says he's gonna go to the Rocky Mountains where there's a paradise up there. <laughs> and he spoke about the paradise, what it looks like. And I think that's uh, next morning. He didn't panic or sick or nothing, because he was leaning against the uh, wall of the house, outside wall, and facing the sunrise. Sitting there for a while, and he, all the time, he left. <laughs> This is only part one of our interview series with David Swallow Jr. I highly recommend following us on the Patreon so you can get access to these videos and interviews like them first. We also try to release all of our content on there first um, before releasing it free. Uh, we try to make all of the educational content uh, presentable before we do release it free, but through the Patreon you'll get access to archive stuff and all kinds of other things. So please support us and help us do this great work.